Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Buyer Insights and Intelligence Series. Thank you so much for joining us today for Chatting Up Your Visitors, How Live Chat Can Turn Visitors into Buyers. My name is Kelly Lindenau, and I'm the Managing Editor of Demand Gen Report, and I'll also be your moderator for this presentation. Again, thank you all so much for joining us today. But before we begin, I have just a couple housekeeping slides I'd like to share with you first. So for those of you who may be new to Demand and Report, we are an online media company publishing daily news, a weekly email newsletter, original research, special reports, and a rich menu of additional resources. And if you haven't done so already, join more than 75,000 of our subscribers to our weekly newsletter by subscribing at demandgenreport.com today. During and after today's session, please follow along and share your thoughts and feedback on Twitter using the hashtag BII22. All of our links and handles are right here on your screen. And I am so excited to announce that we are going back to Boston for our annual B2B sales and marketing exchange. We can't wait to see our B2B community in person and we really hope you all could join us this August. For more info and to check out the agenda and see who our speakers are, please visit the B2B MS SMX website for more information and to register. It's B2B sales marketing.exchange. And then today's presentation is taking place in the On24 platform. You can access all the information you need from the toolbar you see on your screen. We encourage you to ask our presenters questions. To do so, simply click the Q&A widget at the top right corner of the screen. Today's presentation is slated to turn about 25 to 35 minutes with a few extra minutes reserved at the end for a Q&A. You can submit your questions using this widget at any time. And if you'd like to see what else we have in store for the series this year, you can access all the BII sessions on the right of your screen under that Q&A widget. And then on the bottom right, we've made some additional resources available for you. And we are recording today's session and all of our attendees will receive an archive link to the presentation so you could go back, review and share with your colleagues. And in addition to joining the conversation online and submitting your questions, we'd also love to hear how we're doing. We've put together a very brief survey that will automatically launch once this webinar session ends. But you could also pull up and complete this survey at any time throughout the webinar simply by clicking the survey icon circled on your screen. Before signing off today, please take a moment to complete this little survey so we can continue to enhance our events to your liking. And now we are finally getting to the exciting stuff. I am pleased to introduce our future speakers for today, Arjun Pillay and Lauren McHugh. Arjun started his first company at 23. He successfully built and sold two companies in the MarTech and sales tech spaces. He is currently SVP at ZoomInfo, but previously he was the founder and CEO of Incent, which was acquired by ZoomInfo. He managed data strategy at Full Contact, and he was the founder and CEO at Profoundus, acquired by Full Contact. Lauren McHugh is a Senior Product Marketing Manager for ZoomInfo's Marketing OS product line. Lauren has been a product marketer for more than 11 years, and she's focused on a variety of personas. Prior to ZoomInfo, Lauren focused on video editors and broadcasters at Avid Technology, IT professionals at LogMeIn, and marketers at Brightcove. Lauren thrives off cross-functional engagements and tedious launch planning. When she is not at work, Lauren loves to travel, cook, hike, and spend time with her husband, dog, and horse. Clearly, we are in great hands today. So with that, I'm going to pass things over to Lauren to get us started. Great. Thank you. And I'm really excited today because Arjun is one of my favorite people at uh, Zoom Info, and we have great conversations, and we're excited to record these conversations for you guys all today. So part of the Marketing OS uh, product line that I cover includes chat. Uh, and we know that chat, at least at Zoom Info, we know that chat is a key driver for conversion and websites and um, allowing marketers to get the most out of their campaigns. And we're excited to walk you through uh, what we think um, is really important for you guys to, to know when getting a chat bot or thinking about a chat strategy. So to kick it off, we wanted to walk through why people are thinking about adopting a conversation strategy. And there's a few key elements that go into it, but one of the elements that we wanted to definitely dive into was the impact of site conversion. We know that marketers spend thousands, if not more than thousands of dollars uh, driving people to their website to hopefully convert a fraction of those into leads, which will then convert into pipeline. 
So one of the elements that we are looking uh, from uh, the chat side is that chat allows you to really escalate that conversion and really have an impact on converting those leads once they're on the site. And one of the facts that uh, Arjun wanted to talk to was about the speed to lead. So you wanna walk us through that, Arjun? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, yeah, no, to adding on to your point of the conversion, uh, we have seen consistently about 10 to 15% more conversion by putting a chat on, on your website, right? The, the key here is the psychology of the buyer is continuously shifting. And this is uh, uh, the now mentality of people, especially given that there is more than 55% of business buyers are now millennials. There's a lot of now mentality. Right, so I'm on the website, I'm doing the research, how do I take the next step right now? That's one, right? Then the other side is, there are so many SaaS options to choose from. SaaS has proliferated over the last 20 years and take any particular business problem, you can always have like five to 10 solutions uh, that solve that problem, right? So it's not, and it's almost impossible today to stand out just with features. So you have to stand out in buyer experience. Um, so combining the now mentality and the fact that there are too many options, you have to think about speed to lead. And this is something that um, I speak to a lot of marketers, and this is something that always uh, is on the top of the mind. And Lauren, you know this at Zoom Info, right? If somebody submits a form on Zoom Info website, we get in touch with them in less than 90 seconds, right? So we as a company are super quick uh, on on get into the leads, like the speed to lead aspect. There was an interesting HBR article and you can, people who are listening to this and watching, you can go and search for this. There's an HBR article that talks about speed to lead particularly. So in the first five minutes, if you don't get in touch with a, a lead that came to your website or are on your website, if you get in touch in five minutes, you are hundred X more likely to get in touch with them. So this is after the lead, obviously, but I mean, I'm just emphasizing the speed to lead. And today it feels like marketers are kind of aware of this keyword and they are trying to optimize speed to lead. They go ahead and measure their speed to lead, right? They see how am I doing with this whole speed to lead thing? And then they try to optimize that. And one of the most obvious solutions that they will land on is how do I put a B2B chat platform that is live on the website that can attend to my visitors in real time and get my speed to lead to the maximum as much as I can I can get to. So um, that's, I, I think we kind of touched upon why people uh, think about an adoption of con uh, conversation strategy and also about how it impacts it a little bit. Um, yeah, so Lauren, does that kind of talk to your point? Yeah, definitely. And I feel like it also, as you were talking and talking about speed to lead, and I know that our, uh, like you said, our sales team connects within 90 seconds of a uh, lead coming through a form completion, which is like so quick. And it, it's worked well, very well for Zoom Info. Uh, it's one of the plays that we have in our playbook. Um, but I think it's important to also highlight that I, for me personally, I feel like Chat is one of the many tools that also bridges the gap between sales and marketing. Obviously, marketing is driving uh, lead or driving people to your website and encouraging them to explore the website. But once you're on the website and you have a chat engagement, those leads go directly to a sales rep. So you're kind of taking out some of that middle ground uh, gray area that could potentially slow down your speed to lead. And I think um, highlighting that this sales and marketing alignment is a, a key element of why people should start to think about a, conver a conversation strategy. 100%, yeah, yeah, totally. In, in most cases, the website experiences are controlled by the marketing team, but their job is to take the lead and, and pass it on to the right salesperson. And chat gives like a really good way to do that. And then also make sure that marketers have the visibility into what exactly is happening to this lead. Yeah, exactly. So let's dig in a little bit deeper. So as we are starting to think about, uh, so you've decided to adopt a conversation strategy. How do you use that conversation to really drive your demand gen strategy? Obviously this is a demand gen audience, very focused on the demand gen element of it. And we will bring in both sides of sales and demand gen throughout this conversation. 
but uh, we wanted to focus on how to use conversational marketing in your demand gen strategy in this point. So we see that there's a few major ways to uh, really get a strategy off the ground. So there's the ability to have a chat bot. So anyone that lands on your page, you can have them go through a certain flow. Also, depending on if you have the ability to identify who they are, you can do a personalized flow for them. But that would be a specific chat bot. We also have the ability to do uh, a person or a human first experience. So say uh, your target account lands on your website, you know uh, that it is someone that you would like to have a person-to-person -person conversation to. Uh, you can have those uh, human first conversations as well. Or we also have a high, there's also a hybrid approach. And that's the approach that we actually recommend when you come from a Zoom info chat standpoint, we go through onboarding. Recommendation is to have both a uh, hybrid of the chatbot and the person to person. We see it has a maximum impact. It allows you to focus on the accounts that are on your site that are really uh, the target accounts that you would like to have a conversation with right now versus someone who might just start, um, might be starting to look around and starting to dig in. You can allow them to go through a, a, a chat bot first and allow them to dive deeper into your site. You can give them content, you can do reference links, et cetera. So we recommend that we have a hybrid, a hybrid approach. Is there anything you'd like to add to that, Arjun? Yeah, um, yeah, no, I, I, I think most of our customers use a hybrid uh, strategy to your point, Lauren, and I think that's where mm -hmm. the maximum results are coming up. The other important aspect that I've always uh, requested our customers to look at when they go about doing conversational marketing is to build out like an integrated marketing strategy, right? Like people think about chat as in some cases, right? And this is not the right way to think about it is, hey, I want to introduce chat, right? So it's a point solution thought process where I want to put a chat bot onto my, my website and that's that, right? So that's not the right way to, would it work? Yeah, it, it would work. Would it create a little bit more con uh, conversions? Absolutely, right? Because chat is something that people want to use. However, would it be maximum effective? Would it really impact the efficiency, your sales efficiency a lot? Not really. So the way to do it is to think about it as an integrated strategy. And what that means is look at your funnel in totality and then make chat as a key part of that touch point in your marketing funnel, right? At the top of the funnel, how do you use chat and the conversational marketing as a channel for you to um, educate people, interact with people, and then enable conversion? So that is the first part, right? Think about it as a holistic strategy. The other part of this is how well does the conversational platform that you use um, integrate with some of the other systems? So like, uh, Lauren, you talked about high priority accounts or account-based uh, targeted accounts, right? How do you pull these accounts? Because my targeted accounts today is like 100 companies. Next month, it may still be 100, but it's totally different 100, right? Because it, it's it's changing. So can I manually go and edit this in the chat platform all the time? It's not possible. So like you, what you have to do is you have to find a platform that integrates with your Salesforce and Marketo and Iloqo and Pardot and whichever are the systems that you are using, you should be able to plug this chat platform right in so that there is a dynamic update of the targeted accounts and the sales owners and the lead owners and the deal values. And then the conversational strategy should be based on some of the rules that are being set up on top of your existing data, right? Like if the deal value is higher than this, if they visit this pricing page and they have, uh, they fall in this particular target account list, if they are talking to this particular agent or if they have spoken with this particular salesperson, connect to this particular salesperson, right? So think about how you can integrate it from that angle with your existing tools. The last part of integrated thing that I would talk about is when you are handing off a chat to an, a live agent, could be an SDR, could be an account executive, how do you make the experience integrated for that person? Are you passing on all the context of the chat or the visitor to that person, things like this is the third visit from the person, things like they have spent six minutes, they have attended a webinar, um, the company they are coming from, the location they are coming from, you know, the revenue of the company. Are you passing on all these contextual information to the SDR or the account executive so that they can have a seamless conversation, kind of like a continuation with whatever that the buyer has been doing, right? 
So like that is uh, how I would think about an integrated marketing approach or strategy. Uh, and yeah, I, I think that's probably the three things that I would focus on on top of what you mentioned, Lauren, uh, to, to have a successful conversational marketing implementation. Yeah, there's nothing worse when you're having a conversation or you're potentially on like a call where they just toss you to someone else and then you have to reintroduce yourself all over again and what you're looking to do, like the handoff is really a key element into the success of those conversational strategies and knowing who you're talking to. And like you said, having the ability to have context behind who you're talking to, maybe the company just went through an acquisition, maybe they just got a significant round of funding and they're looking for new technologies. All of that information is critical to allow you to have a great conversation with um, the visitor and also help, again, that speed to lead. Hopefully having those conversations and that flow really critical or really smooth will allow you to have a faster conversion because it just, you're continuing that conversation versus restarting it every time. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And that, that we also touched on a little bit of the, and I know, you know, we have, we are supposed to talk about the features, so probably, you know, <laughs> you can, you can get out with that, but, you know, we talked about a little bit of the features, but diving into the features and looking at how would you look at the implementation of a conversational marketing is probably the right next step for us. Yeah, definitely. As you just hinted to, we were going to transition to what you should start to look to when you are looking to build your conversational strategy, the features to look for, what will help with those conversations. Um, and some of the key elements, there's many, many, many features that you can have within a chat bot. There's so many, but so we wanted to really cover uh, the first, the probably the top five uh, that we think, and that is integrations, the ability to have real-time meeting scheduling, uh, being able to have routing, um, specialized routing, and then also account-based marketing. Uh, so let's dive into the integrations first. So as you were talking about the importance of integrating to your CRM and your sales engagement tools, uh, we also are seeing really great success within our Zoom Info instance, where we are connecting to tools that our sales team are already using. So Salesforce.com, Slack, uh, Microsoft Teams, we can have the having the conversation and the notifications pop up in a Slack versus having to have the teammate go to another uh, tool to really continue that conversation is a key element that we find um, in terms of the integration. And if we look at our chat customers overall, um, a, a big part of our benchmark is that if they have an integration to their Slack or Microsoft Teams, we see that they have a really high value. They're a really high value customer to us because they're really engaged. They're seeing great engagement and great conversion on their site. And we think that um, one of the key elements is, is integrations into their tech stack. Did you want to add anything into that piece, Arjun? Um, yeah, uh, one, I want to kind of qualify what you said with a little bit of data that I've seen across yeah. the product usage that, you know, um, so yeah, a very high percentage of our customers use Slack and Microsoft Teams integration. And uh, the reason is obvious, right? The marketers mm -hmm. who are listening to this, or even the salespeople who are listening to this, they are somewhere, they are nodding their head saying that, you know, I have implemented chat, but it did not really get picked up by my SDRs, right? The adoption yeah. is kind of like the biggest problem. And um, what we have observed is, when you are integrating to Slack and Microsoft Teams and then telling your SDR team, Hey, we have bought this new tool. You don't have to go anywhere else. It is going to proactively alert you on your Slack and Teams. Just when you get it, just respond to it, right? The adoption is far quicker. First of all, they are not going to hate you for implementing a new tool. Uh, and then once this is, adoption is done, what we have also observed is the speed at which they will get in touch with a potential buyer is four times than going to a new tab. So we have customers using Slack, Teams, and also in our own inbox, right? So we have all of them at, at Zoom for chat. Um, and when we looked at the data, that's what we observed. Through Slack and Teams, people respond three to four times faster. So um, this even goes to, you know, the success of implementation, right? So if you pick the platform with the right features, then it goes into the, the success too. I just wanted to add that a little bit, Lauren, and also, you know, as a next step to the features, and you mentioned about the real-time meeting scheduling. So I just wanted to continue that thread. Um, I think the top used feature on our chat platform is the real-time meeting scheduling, right? Um, and, and for people who are on the call, what it means is you're on the chat 
and then you're talking to, let's say, a human or a chatbot, and you as a buyer are ready to have a meeting schedule, right? And would you go into email and go back and forth and take two weeks to schedule, or would you pop up the right calendar within that chat platform so that it's immediate? So that real-time scheduling is what we are talking about. Though it is as simple as throwing up a calendar, the key here is who are they talking to, whose calendar should pop up, how should it get routed? There's a lot of these routing related things that have to happen in the uh, backend. So the platform handles all of this and then pops up the calendar almost instantaneously, right? The speed again is very critical here. Almost in instantaneously within the chat platform allows people to click one button, fill up, let's say like one field, maybe an email field. You do the automated enrichment behind so that they don't have to fill five more fields um, and then say, book the meeting and boom, the meeting is booked, right? So your salespeople love this because they are sleeping and the chatbot just booked three meetings for them next week, right? <laughs> so they wake up on their calendar and they have like three 45 minutes meeting uh, to demo my platform. Wow, who doesn't like it, right? So like that's another interesting feature. So integrations, real-time scheduling, um, and, and Lauren, what, what else would you like to continue on? Yeah, I mean, I, we actually just released a blog uh, about last week, I believe, around the real-time scheduling. And one of the stats that we used when we did the blog was that it, it takes about seven conversations back and forth to get a meeting set from a like a sale, between a salesperson and a prospect. So imagine that, again, it's that speed to lead. You're, they're allowing you to pick that time um, that works the best for them. So one, hopefully it, it allows them to get to a lead faster, but also at the same time, we're also seeing that it impacts the no-shows of those conversations. So um, I believe a percentage of, uh, I believe half, I think it was like 50%, I'll get the stat specifically, but the uh, I believe about 50% of no-shows uh, are diminished when the people actually, or the prospects or customers actually choose the time that works the best for them versus going back and forth, because we all know that stuff pops up, but if they're able to choose yeah, and time. One of the I, I just remember one more stats again, you know, sorry, sorry for throwing all the stats, you know, I just look at the product <laughs> usage data so much. One of our customer uh, got 37% of all of their form fills accelerated into a meeting using the real time um, wow. the booking thing, right? So one of the other features that you should think about when you implement chat is how do you accelerate a form fill into a real time scheduling very quickly? And um, there are platforms that support it. And then in, in our data, like think about 100 people filling out the form instead of going back and forth to your point, Lauren, like seven touch points, you are giving like 40 of them are going to pick the meeting like then and there. Avoids mm -hmm. the drop off, you know, accelerates the sales cycle by two or three weeks, and then make sure that the no shows are going down. Right? It's just yeah. um, mind blowing uh, ROI for something as simple as five minutes of setup. Yeah, exactly. And one element that you, uh, I want to dig into a little bit more that you talked about um, t when talking about uh, setup is about the routing and how important routing is when it comes to your uh, conversation. Oh conversational marketing system. Yeah, so we know that there is routing that you can do round robin, but we also know the importance of having Salesforce routing. I sort of hinted at it before. If you have a target account that's on your website, you wanna make sure that that's going to the right uh, salesperson that's already engaged with them or uh, someone that has been a part of that team, that selling team versus going to an SDR. Because again, you you don't want that conversation to, to restart. You want it to go to who it's going for. So, and there's also office hours based routing. So digging into those three, we think that um, routing is a critical point of conversational marketing and allowing you to have the flexibility in what type of routing um, is important because it'll, it will allow you to not only have uh, success and have more options when you're creating your conversation and you are creating that flow and who's having those engagements. But also um, when it comes to the meeting time, you'd be able to have more calendar options and more um, uh, capabilities to get those calendars um, set with the, with the routing. Anything else you wanted to do? Any stats from you, Arjun, for routing? <laughs> Uh, not on that one. I think, you know, people, um, as you, as a company progresses, you know, they start with round robin, then they advance to office hours, then to Salesforce. But you covered that very well, uh, Lauren. I don't have any stats yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You can go the to last... the next 
Um, yeah, I was going to say the last feature we were going to talk through was about account-based marketing and the importance of uh, having chat be a, a part of that. Did you want to dig into that? Sure. Yeah. No, account-based marketing is a is a topic that's very close to my heart, and the whole marketing OS platform Mine is account-based. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, when we talk about account-based marketing via chat, what we actually mean is uh, targeted chat, right? That's what it boils down to. Um, out of your 100% website visitors, a, a good bunch of that, a percentage of that are going to be your existing customers, right? So like there may be an upsell opportunity there, but if we remove that and then let's say there is X percentage of your, um, which is typically 80 to 90% or maybe 70 to 90% are your new people coming onto your website, right? At any point in time, there is like 5 to 8% of them in my experience who are ready to consider or buy your solution. But then what ends up happening is about 1.5% of them will do the form fills, maybe, or maybe less than that, right? So the other, let's say, 4 to 7% of the people who are potentially good buyers for you, they will kind of bounce off, right? That is where this account-based targeted chat help you. So the way it works is when somebody is landing on the website, a good chat platform will try to identify the visitor or the visitor account, which company they are coming from, this is being done using an IP to company resolution, right? Something like Zoom Info has websites, which is IP to company resolution. And once you identify that company, what the platform has to do is it has to see if they are part of your ICP. Is that visiting company part of your ideal customer persona? Look at the revenue number, employees, location, look at all the different ICP criteria that you have set up. And if those are true, then what happens is it automatically has to proactively alert the right salesperson, which goes to your earlier point of routing, Lauren, right? I get the targeted account, and then I'll go ping Salesforce and see who is the owner for this account. And I'll pull the owner, I'll take that owner details, and then I'll push a proactive alert to owner saying, hey, Lauren, your targeted accounts account Adobe is on your website. Would you like to go ahead and have a chat with them? And then that gives you, Lauren, as the account executive, an opportunity to jump in from Slack and say something like, hey, company X, we are here in case you have any questions. It's good to know that you are visiting our site. It was lovely to have you uh, see the demo last week, whatever, right? So alert, identifying the company, alerting the right salesperson or the SDR or the account executive, and then giving a white glove experience to the targeted accounts so that your conversion and the sales cycle moves faster. That is what we call as the account-based conversational marketing experience. Yeah, I think that's all great. I think the white glove experience is uh, something that I think is also really unique. And the ability to, again, pull in that data will allow you to have more insights, like especially if there's some big news element that happened um, within the chat platform, you're able to see scoops, which is uh, a Zoom Info capability where you're able to see any relative news, like I was saying before, uh, funding, or maybe they had um, acquired a company. So you, you're able to have even more tailored conversation more than just like, hi, Arjun, I see that you're on my site. You can say, hi, Arjun, I see that you're, com congratulations on acquiring company XYZ. So I really do think the white glove experience is a, is a critical experience when you're looking to do more targeted account-based um, functionality within your chat. Absolutely. And so I know we've been talking a lot in a little bit of a theoretical standpoint, but we wanted to dig into some of our real life use cases and give you insights into companies that we see uh, success that are having success on chat, but also uh, how Zoom Info itself is using chat um, from a chat strategy. So uh, we have chat on our website uh, and we are at, we actually just launched probably a few months ago the ability to do an off hour bot. So like Arjun was saying, uh, imagine being asleep or away for the weekend and you come in on Monday and you have probably 10 to 15 meetings that, have, that were booked over the weekend. We know that a lot of people are really busy all the time during the day. Um, so doing research in their off hours will allow them to go to websites and more engagement uh, is higher at, at night or in off hours. So the ability to, uh, we launched recently the ability to have an off hours bot, which will allow customers to get um, meetings booked with any of our sales teams um, on the weekends or even in hours 
uh, between after the hours, I believe, of like 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. or something like that. So we are looking to make sure that we have that coverage so that our rep is uh, our reps are always getting their calendars full with new demos and new uh, conversations to get started. And uh, we saw great success with having the bot on the chat bot and our human first um, our hybrid approach throughout the the workday. So we were excited to take to the next level and get that weekend uh, coverage as well. And I believe there was something, uh, uh, we also wanted to talk through form acceleration and that is your baby Arjun. <laughs> yeah, we touched up on it and I can give you other real life use cases too, Lauren. Um, so form acceleration uh, for, for, you know, we were talking about how somebody can fill out the form and then pop up the chat, right? So typically you can imagine like 25% to 40% increase in form submission to meeting acceleration through using that. We have had several customers using form acceleration. It's one of the uh, easiest in terms of implementation, but maximum ROI that, that I was mentioning. I also want to give two real life examples of strategies that, that our customers mm -hmm. have implemented, which uh, could go well for our, for our uh, attendees here. One thing that one of our customers, what they did is they tied the chat platform along with their cold outreach plat uh, platform. Right, so like Zoom Info has Engage, which is a you know cold outbound uh, sales enablement platform or sales engagement platform. So like when you are sending out your emails from any platform, there is a way in which you can tie those emails to chat. So when somebody is clicking on those emails and landing onto the websites, the chat can pop up and then give like a very personalized welcome that says you know thank you for reading the email. I understand that you are. Uh, you are interested in conversational intelligence and then proactively alert that SDR and then, you know, make sure that the SDR is ready to have that conversation, right? And we have seen 20% to maybe 22% increase in booking of meetings using by tying your cold outbound campaigns or any kind of emailing campaigns to a chat platform and then enabling booking of meeting that way. Um, so that is one strategy that we have seen a lot of success. The other strategy which I found very interesting is this company was more of a enterprise uh, mid-market kind of a company with ASPs of like $100,000, $150,000 for their product. What they did is they only took their enterprise accounts and they put only account executives on the chat platform. And when these enterprise accounts are coming onto the website, they alert the account managers. So this is not even a new sales use case. This is an upsell use case that they are doing it for, right? They, so our platform has the ability to identify whether it is customers versus prospects. And if it is customer, if it is an enterprise customer, then they immediately get routed to account manager. So their customers love it because it's a white glove experience. They don't have to send an email. Whenever they want something, they'll just get onto the website. They get connected to their enterprise account manager in real time, and then they can get their things done. Right? So they love the experience. Is it pure sales? Not really. It's more of an account management, maybe even a little bit of a customer success use case that they are using it for. But I found it to be very interesting when I was looking at the data. And they are saying that the, the relationship, the NPS, um, and the upsells, all three metrics are moving positively. We are looking to do a case study, so I don't have the numbers. But I <laughs> uh, just wanted to throw that also as a real-life use case there. Yeah, and that one makes a lot of sense because we know... Um as like marketers and also as myself, as a human that lives in this world, um, that we have, like I do a lot of research on the website of a company, even if I'm already a customer of that company, I will start to look into like, oh, can they do this before I ever even reach out? If I had an account manager, I would do the research before reaching out to them. So it allows you to tie that uh, together as well. Exactly. Great use for them, yeah. So I think uh, that wraps up our conversation about conversational marketing. So I think we're going to bring Kelly back and we will do some Q&A. Yes, absolutely. Thank you both again so much for that great presentation and all those insights. You two sparked some great questions. But before I get to those, I just have to take a second to remind our attendees to please share their thoughts and feedback before logging off today. Uh, you could do so by clicking the survey icon um, and it will also launch automatically when the session ends. So now let's get to those questions. Um, so the first one I'm gonna grab is, how can chat help manage coverage across time zones? Our sales team is pretty spread out. 
That's a great question. And we covered a little bit of it uh, throughout the conversation, but depending on how you set it up, you're able to identify who the rep is that will be on um, that round robin. So you can also set the times for different round robins. So if you have different uh, uh, different groups that have different time zones, you ha have that ability within the platform itself. Um, but it, it can be something that's also 24 seven. So like I was saying, we have the ability to do off hours uh, or we just launched the ability to do off hours within our own uh, chat bot. So you're able to have a uh, conversational flow and have people uh, get meetings even if they are in Australia and they're visiting at 2 a.m. for the East Coast time. So uh, there's a lot of different options, but you have flexibility within your routing and also within the ability to have a, a chat bot first experience versus a human first experience. Anything to add, Arjun? Um, yeah, the only thing that I'd add there is uh, the chat platform also has an ability uh, to by default jump in if the human is not available. So that's also mm -hmm. a feature that you know, they can use, whether it is off hours, whatnot, right? The chatbot will wait for a little bit of time to see whether there is a human involvement. If not, then the chatbot will automatically jump in and say something like, looks like our humans are not available, would love to speak <laughs> with you. Can we set up a meeting or can I take your email so that we can get back in touch with you? You know, so th that goes to your always on um, strategy that Lauren, that you mentioned. But that's another feature that our customers use to make sure that there is coverage across different geographies. Love that. All right, perfect. And then um, the next question is, how has Zoom Info balanced human first with automation when it comes to the chat feature? Yeah, sure. So we covered a little bit of that as well um, as we were talking, but diving into it a little it, uh, more. So we have the ability to target based off of um, who is visiting the site. So if we know that the customer is within our ideal customer or it's a known account or it's someone we've already engaged with, we can have that be a few, human first experience versus if we uh, say our ideal customer profile is a mid-market to enterprise customer, uh, we would focus the human first experiences to those types of customers versus or those types of accounts versus if someone from an SMB was to come on, we would allow that we would probably do we would do a human first experience with them, have them go through some of the conversation. And as they get to be a warmer lead and engage more, then we can transition it over to a human first. So it allows you to be more targeted in your approach and allows you to um, the data behind the the platform and behind chat allows you to be uh, really specific on who you want to have those human first engagements with versus who you want to have uh, chat for or a bot first engagement with. Um, but it, for us, it's really important to identify our key accounts and make sure that, uh, like Arjun was saying, they have that white glove experience um, and not that others are not as important, but um, we have the ability to have multiple conversation flows that can take them in many different directions, whether it's to content or to links or um, to a demo up with another rep. Um, that is also a success to get them into having a deeper conversation with a human. One of the things, uh, again, um, adding on to what Lauren mentioned is about the, the, the human first uh, experience. Uh, the best way to think about it is you can have 100% human, you can have 100% chatbot, right? Where do you draw the line? And that really depends on how much bandwidth that you have as a company to, to draw it. Like do, if you have 50 SDRs and they are happy to spend some time, um, then, you know, you can have a lot of human first experiences, mm -hmm. right? You can probably give micro for everybody on your website. Versus if you are giving like three people or two SDRs dedicated for chats, then they don't have that level of bandwidth, right? So like one thing that um, everything that Lauren mentioned, plus look at the bandwidth that you have and then experiment it a, it a little bit, right? Every month, make some changes here and there and see how the human first versus chatbot traffic is changing and how much of a conversion difference is it making. We have had customers who started 100% chatbot and then experimented on uh, agent for like a one month and got a lot of responses there and then doubled down and decreased the number of seats to like 10 people, right? We have had the companies other way also, started with 15 and brought it down to like 12 or 10 or whatever to make sure that they are optimizing their resources. So it's a little bit of how you want to play your, again, going back to the integrated marketing strategy point that we made earlier. 
Okay, perfect. And now we are coming up on time, but I want to grab one more question from the audience. Um, so someone is wondering, how does the typical response time for a chat bot differ from live chat? Okay, I, I can probably take this one. Um, so the typical response time for a chat bot, it, it, it actually, you know, I'm going to take this question and answer it slightly differently. Um, the, the, the thing that you've got to understand is when is the right time to put a person in front of the visitor versus a chatbot? A chatbot response time is always immediate, right? Like you, you put something, chatbot will respond immediately. But a human will take time and all of that. But during that buyer journey, if you look at it, if somebody is at the very start of the buyer journey, then putting them in front of a uh, a human being might not be the best thing to do because they are only in their research phase. At that time, let them research, give them a chatbot, let the chatbot give them a few pieces of content and let them be, right? But as they come together through their uh, their buying cycle, let's say, say 60%, 70%, um, and you you should know what is that, what does 70% mean? I can give an example of uh, another company, somebody, uh, a customer of ours, uh, when they close a hundred thousand dollar deal, the buyers will come on an average thirty five times to the website before they sign the hundred thousand dollar deal. So, like their seventy percent of buying journey is a is a lot, right? It's like they have to come twenty percent before they are ready to have an agent conversation, maybe. Um, so, you have to decide what is that right time to put them in front of an SDR or an account executor. So, like the way I would think about a typical response time is. Um, Start with the chatbot, let them let them take some time to figure out what is the website, do them research, and then either let them raise their hand and say, hey, I want to talk to a human being, or wait for like 30 seconds or 45 seconds, or you know, whatever is the time frame that you want to allow them to do a little bit of research and then give them humans. Or when they come for the second time, immediately give them humans. So figure out what is the right experience for your customers so that you, you can optimize the conversational marketing and the conversational strategy to the maximum. Lauren, anything that I missed or anything you want to add? No, I think you covered it. Perfect. All right, awesome. So unfortunately, that is all the time we have for questions today. But if we didn't get to yours live, don't worry, we will follow up with answers via email. Arjun and Lauren, thanks again for such a great session. And thank you to all of our attendees for taking the time to join us today. Please be sure to tune in for our next session of the series titled Using Enrichment Data to Identify Revenue sing Signals for Efficient Growth. That starts at 1 p.m. today. I hope to see you all there.